you starting right now? Starting right now, Mark. Hello everybody, welcome back to Tom Reads Things. My name's Tom, I hope you're all very, very well. It's been about 517 years since I did a video, um, so I'm back today with my February wrap up. So yeah, it's been ages since I've done a video. Um, well, I feel like it's been ages anyway. Um, work's just been really, really, really busy. At I'm filming this video for the first time in our bedroom and um, because I need somewhere like, I need somewhere per a bit more permanent where I can record my videos because I always have to do a load of faffing around setting stuff up and I just like a permanent setup where I can record my videos. So this may well be my new background. I hope you'll like it. But yeah, I'm recording my uh, for the first time in our bedroom and Mark's sitting on the bed watching me. Being very noisy and distracting, aren't you? Shut up! Um, so yeah, so this is my bedroom. I hope you like it. Look at my lovely blue walls, aren't they nice? They're very Victorian, aren't they? <laughs> oh, for God's sake, this isn't gonna work at all. Just don't look at me. Okay, I'm not gonna look at Mark. So yeah, work's just been really, really busy um, and I've not had any energy <laughs> to record any videos. Um, so lots of books to get through in February. I had such a good reading month in February. Um, so let's crack on, shall we? The first one that I want to talk about is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Now I am reading all of the Harry Potter books this year for the very first time um, as part of a kind of read along thing that I'm doing called Harry Potter 2020. Um, I'll link the video down below, my announcement video, and also my previous video where I talked about the Philosopher's Stone. So yeah, I'm reading um, a book a month starting from January 2020 with the Philosopher's Stone and February 2020 was time for The Chamber of Secrets. I absolutely bloody loved this and I cannot wait to get to The Prison of Azkaban in March, um, but I will do a separate video about this uh, book um, for my Harry Potter 2020 series, so more on this in another video. Mm. The next book that I want to talk about was a real, real treat for me. I absolutely bloody loved it again. And that was a return to me to a type of book and a type of literature that I absolutely adore, but hadn't actually read in quite a while. And that is Victorian literature. So um, I read uh, The Nurses, uh, The Old Nurses Story by Elizabeth Gaskell. Oh, I just love Elizabeth Gaskell's writing. This um, was, is a collection of two short stories, actually, one called um, Curious If True and one called The Old Nurse's Story. And it was just such a wonderful treat to delve back into some Victorian literature just for 50 pages or so um, worth of reading. And it was just absolutely bloody brilliant. Harry, stop licking the bed, please. Good boy. The Old Nurse's story is uh, is a kind of chilling ghost story, if you like. It tells the story of a um, of a wealthy family, and it's the nurse basically telling the children um, about how she came to know their mother and what happened to their mother and their mother's yeah. family when she was really young. Um, so I absolutely bloody love that. And then Curious If True, I can't even remember what it was about, but I know I liked it. It was only like 20 pages long. What was it? Oh yeah, it was an extract of a letter from Richard Whittingham Esquire. I can't really remember, remember, remember much about it, but I do remember that I loved it. So yeah, there's that. The next one was another lovely little uh, Penguin Black classic. So if anyone doesn't know, Mark got me um, a load of Penguin, little Penguin Black classics, mini, the mini ones, um, for my birthday. So I'm reading those as like palate cleansers in between books. Um, so the next one that I read was um, Lord Arthur Savile's Crime by Oscar Wilde. And it just reminded me how much I love Oscar Wilde and his dialogue the way he writes dialogue is so 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 good it just ugh, i was just think i read this and it was completely ridiculous and completely wonderful at the same time it follows the story of um a uh, aristocratic gentleman and he is at a house party one night house party oi, oi. he has his palm read by for some kind of fortune teller uh, who tells him basically he's going to commit a murder um so he thinks bloody hell to commit a murder. Better get this murder out of the way before I marry my girlfriend, hadn't I? So he tries to murder a couple of people, like who he thinks, oh, it's okay to murder them. Um, and it, that, yeah, it follows that story, really. It's completely over the top and ridiculous and just absolutely bloody beautiful. 
I love Oscar Wilde and I cannot, cannot, cannot wait to read some more of him. Now then, sticking with the 19th century theme, the next book I read was a book that Mark got me for my birthday um, last year, and that is Elegant Etiquette in the 19th Century by Mallory James. Now, I first saw this um, actually on Katie's channel over at Books and Things, and that's where Mark saw it as well, and he got it for me because he saw it on Katie's channel. This is absolutely brilliant if you like reading Victorian literature and just if you're interested in Victorian history in general really. Um, it, it, what it, what I loved about this is it goes through all of the reasons for the kind of rules around elegance and etiquette in Victorian England really um, and it puts into context a lot of the reasons why characters do certain things and beha behave in certain ways in the Victorian novels that we're all reading so if you are a fan of Victorian literature, then definitely, definitely, definitely pick this up because it will make you think when you're reading Victorian literature, you'll be like, ah, oh, that's why that was that kind of scandal was such a big deal. Because in 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 terms of etiquette in the 19th century, that really was a big deal. And it will put, you know, um, letter writing and courting and marriages and, the, you know, the status of different dukes and earls and barons and things all into a brilliant brilliant context for you so yeah this was superb it was only like something like 130 pages something like that 119 pages um so absolutely scoot through it um and it was just absolutely brilliant i was wondering whether i should wait until victober to read this but i just couldn't i couldn't wait look at my hair i've got like a tintin fringe do you remember tintin the next book that I want to talk about is Requiem for a Knave by Laura Carlin. Um, so I was very, very lucky to be given this as a proof copy um, from Simon at Savage Reads. Thanks very much, Simon. I absolutely adored The Wicked Cometh by Laura Carlin. I believe it was her debut novel. Um, and so I was really, really, really excited to get to this. And Simon and I did it as a kind of partial, um, partial buddy read. Um, and... I really, really enjoyed it. It is very, very, very different to The Wicked Cometh um, in the sense that it's set in a different time period. This is set in the, I believe, the 14th century or the 15th century, I can't remember, um, in England. And it follows the story of a young man and his journey away from the home that he's lived in his entire life um, in order to um, find some answers to things that he's needed in his life. And he carries with him this secret that he's held all of his life, that he has um, a disfigurement which was caused by him uh, contracting the plague. Yeah, it would have been the 14th century then. Um, it, him contracting the plague when he was a baby. Um, and it, it follows his story... Uh, as he goes through the kind of countryside of England and who he meets and the different things that he has to face and basically early on in the story he is he gets um, kind of um, tied up in this awful event that happens that isn't really his fault um, and he doesn't approve of but still he because he was there and he saw it he was kind of complicit to it in, in a way and it kind of the story kind of goes on from there it was really 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 gripping um I think it's a lot darker than The Wicked Cometh and then, I mean The Wicked Cometh especially towards the end is pretty dark but this was a lot darker so um I really enjoyed the way that uh Laura Carling kind of developed the this this kind of main character and another character as well that he meets along the way and it's really 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 beautiful poetic writing um but with a fantastic storyline as well but do beware it is pretty dark the next book that i want to talk about uh that i read in february is the driver's seat by muriel spark um so recently simon from savage reads and i went to cambridge uh together uh, where i live and we went uh, book shopping and just had a wonderful bloody day in Cambridge really and as part of um, of our day out in Cambridge uh, Simon picked out some books for me to buy with a voucher that I had and this was among them. Um, now I would never have picked this up and I, I don't know why but I would never have picked, been in a bookshop and picked this up and thought yeah this is something I really 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 want to read but I'm so glad that I did. I've never read anything like this before. Um, it's it, it's the story of a uh, of a young woman 
and she basically has a stressful job and she decides to um, she decides to uh, to leave, um, not leave, she decides to go on holiday. Um, I don't really know where, I still don't understand where she goes on holiday in this. Um, I think it might be Greece or is it Sweden? I can't remember. Um, but she decides to go on holiday and you kind of soon realise that she has some pretty severe mental health issues and you kind of come to understand it when she's on the plane and she starts talking to someone that's sitting next to her and he's a bit um, strange and then there's all these different characters that she encounters during her very brief trip um, abroad uh, and the way that she interacts with them becomes stranger and stranger and stranger and it's only really towards the end that you kind of figure out what's going on you're like oh my god this is not what I was expecting but it's so gripping so interesting and totally unlike anything I've ever read before so yeah I would really highly recommend this again it's very short it's like what 100 pages um so yeah it's very 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 short so if you're in if you want a kind of quick sharp really interesting really gripping read then do read this it's brilliant the next book that I want to talk about absolutely blew me away it was so good I wish I hadn't read it yet because I just want to read it again as as and come to it again brand new with fresh eyes I just I just absolutely adored it and it is without a doubt my favorite book of this year and I can see it staying with me for such a long time and that is The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setterfield. Now I know so many so many people absolutely love this book and so do I. I first heard about this through Katie's channel at Books and Things. Um, I'll link her channel down below. Uh, it, it, uh, she has mentioned on numerous occasions that this is her favourite novel that's not written in the 19th century and I can absolutely see why. It combines perfectly brilliant characterisation and amazing, amazing, gripping, enthralling, captivating storytelling and that is really why I absolutely adore this book. Um, you can have you can have the most beautiful writing and the most well developed characters, but unless you know how to tell a bloody good story, then uh, then you, something's not working. But this is just absolutely excellent storytelling. It follows the story of a young lady called Margaret Lee, and she is a kind of um, a novice biographer, if you like an amateur biographer, if you like, and she is selected by the world's most prestigious writer um, to write her biography. So she goes to visit her at her house. The, the author's name is Vida Winter. And she she agrees to write her biography as long as she promises to tell her the truth about her life. Because um, after a certain amount of investigation, Margaret realises that each time Vida Winter has been asked to tell her life story, she's kind of given a... Um, given a different story to every journalist and every interviewer that's asked her for a life story before but she, Margaret says you must tell me the truth and Vida Winter agrees to because she is dying and this is her last opportunity to tell the true story of her life. I'm not going to tell you much more but oh, it was just brilliant. It had me absolutely gripped from the first paragraph until the last. I just, these characters do not leave your head until you have picked apart every single thing about them. And after you finish the book, you find just it's because there's such an amazing twist in this book and there's so, it, it goes down a route that you're totally not expecting. You find yourself going back over the earlier chapters to see if there were clues as to what was going to happen. Oh, it's just utterly, utterly, utterly brilliant. And big thanks to Mark, who who knows I like a hardbacked book and got me um, this hardback uh, edition of The Thirteenth Tale, which is really hard to get hold of now. So thanks, Mark. It is absolutely brilliant. Um, oh, there are some fantastic characters in this. The missus who um, basically run, who, who was the housekeeper of the house where Vida Winter grew up in. Um, you know, even characters like Judith and, oh, it's just absolutely, absolutely brilliant. I cannot, cannot, cannot recommend this book enough read it if you haven't already if you have read it already 
and you want to talk about it, let's talk about it in the comments section down below because I'm well up for it. I bloody, bloody, bloody adored this book. Okay, thank you very much for listening. Um, that is the end of my February wrap up. Um, do let me know if you've read any of those books in the comments section down below and I'll be back in a couple of days with a video all about Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets for Harry Potter 2020. Okay, thanks very much. Speak to you soon. Bye.